Hello, I'm Scott, the breathing guy. I'll train you to locate, generate, activate core key energy in physical activity. And the activity of this video is the third one. We're going into more depth and breathing, developing the swimming stroke to a higher level because it's reconditioning your mental synapses, your body sensitive relationship to do this in a meditative way. This is freestyle meditative swimming laps. So let's begin with this uh, physical video review real quick. First thing, I always focus on breathing. That's the key. Really, for all meditation by definition, it deals with breathing and how you move breathing, how you move the energy sensation and awareness, the mind state of being aware of the effects and you directing. Here's a concept for you. What is the question? Here's the question. What is the function of the mind from an energy point of view? And it is to direct energy or consume energy, but never produces energy. Your mind never produces energy. It takes what the body is producing and redirects it and, or uses it in an emotional way or thinking. You know, you cannot really think yourself so hard you're tired afterwards. But that's a consumption of energy. The body isn't producing enough energy. You're not thinking too well. Perfect example is when you're sick. What is being sick? Basically, you don't have any energy. So your thinking is clouded in so many ways. So understanding how energy relationship to the mind's aware ability to function as an awareness of the, uh, even thinking or process, processing emotions all come into play. So let's talk about first core breathing. I want to make sure something you understand. In order to breathe down here, this has to be soft. Shoulders have to be soft. In fact, on every exhale, and you begin, and you start with inhale, through your nose, pause, push, and then blow out your mouth, go like you're smoking a set. Let your shoulders, let your mind focus on the shoulders to come soft. This is natural. People do it naturally, subconsciously even. I want you to do it consciously and mindfully directing it so you can get more benefit for the, for the event. The longer you can exhale, the softer you get the shoulders. Once you get done softening the shoulders, then start exhaling out the nose for longer exhales. The greatest range of inhale and exhale is through the nose. But because we're having an event of swimming, I actually, uh, you start off exhaling out the mouth, but eventually you exhale out of both nose and mouth while you're, while you're swimming. That maximizes the amount of range, but that's a, that's a technique. That's an awareness of being used to being like this. So involved. Um, but the number one I cannot emphasize, first thing when you want to start is softening the shoulders so you can increase the range and the core influence on your physical activity. Otherwise, you're only going to, there's two sources of force, the shoulders, upper body, or your core. The more you emphasize the core, the strain is up here. It's unnatural. It hurts you. The more you're down here, you can be fluid, faster, and much more dynamic involved. So understand it. Learning the 20-second exhale is only the beginning. Then you can increase it from there. But that's a foundation. It's a benchmark. You get there. And the only way you do that is with soft shoulders. You have to sigh. You, most people, when they start exhaling, they go, and the chest stops. And they can't connect it. Until you soften here, if you soften here, this can move down here. But softening the shoulders, not having stress, not having tension, making that, and it works the exhale. Exhale is the release of energy. Shoulder tension, by definition, is energy stored. And breath can release that element, too. And there's a process there. There's, it's much more with the face. It's, it's complicated, but I can't go into that detail in this video series. But back to what do you do? So the first thing you do is always soften the shoulders to get your breath range, loosening up here. I have physical techniques, exercises to get you that way. But that's another video series, just on the exercise part, but we'll get there. Now I'm going to talk about the swimming and the swimming stroke. When you start this off, you've got to do exercises to make your mind have an imprint of awareness of using your fingertips, not your arm, not even your hand, your fingertips and moving the hands. 
And how do you do that exercise? This is my suggestion. There's many ways you can do this. So understanding how to engage selective muscles. How do you develop those muscles that you want to use in your swimming stroke, stroke in a higher level? And it's an exercise. If you had a table or, or up here on your stroke, or you go like this, you're pressing. You can press against the wall. So you're coming around like this, you go here. Now look at my angle in a sense of where do I want my, I don't want to hit the water like this and push down. I want it here, so I'm pulling through from there. So find a table or something and then put, soften your shoulder. Always do this with soft, tight core when you're, and you can do it and press down. Press your fingertips and press your thumb, little finger and all the tips on a board flat. And then pause a little bit, soften your shoulder, Hit, press a little bit more, soften the shoulder, a little bit, and then you can really hard, then release. Why? You're reconditioning your body's response in relationship to an ad emotional attitude brain imprinting of sensations. You have to get used to this sensation versus all the other sensations you've created over the years. You're creating a new imprint of working with your fingertips as a force and connecting it to your core. The more you do, as soon as you put it like this, put a little pressure, drop shoulders. Put a little bit more pressure, drop shoulders. Now you can breathe more. You put a whole lot of by pressing your thumb a little bit, involved. Timing the pressure point during the swim, that's a whole lot. But just developing what muscles are engaged at different points of stroke. Say right here, you have a table here. You're pressing here and your arm is slightly bent. You can feel the muscles engage. And you do it so, always softening up here, engaging down, down here is the rule. Understanding, get this whole process down so you can tone your body in this new meditative way, freestyling and swimming laps. Doing it slow. Next, I'm gonna show you something. This is for a more advanced. In the beginning, you can do a, a long sweep down and like this, just to get used to it. And when you're doing this, don't try to force it. Literally, think of your fingertips going into the water. And let this all be in fluid. Now, let it be fluid. But if you want speed, that comes with time. Mind you, you cannot begin this way because you're going to use the muscles that are not as effective. It's a whole finding what are the most effective muscles you need to create the swimming stroke at different parts of the stroke. So when you get, come like this, then when you get like this, go forward like this, straight, and then down. That's a whole nother. This one here is just like, bam, it's just fluid. When you do enough speed one, you want to go straight and down. That's a whole different sensation. And when you're going straight, you focus on these two fingers. These two fingers. So when you go like this, these two fingers are like pressing really hard. That will straighten your hand up. Then when you then it comes down. You direct that forward line all of a sudden down to about here, and then you pull through. In other words, if you're like this, it's about three or four inches past the pillow of your chest. How far you want to go past the arm, even with your chest even with your chest or right about here. So that way you're pushing, instead of pushing your body up, you're actually down here, you're pushing the ball body forward. The whole idea of going in the water like this is to pull your body forward, not up, then forward. You don't need that. On the breathing side of the head, when you're doing this, your head can go over the side more. When you're doing the way most people do like this, it actually makes you tip your shoulders to the side. You don't, it, it's a whole way of the shoulder, if you want to say the rotation of the shoulders by the way you shape your arm, hand, and, and then like I said, when you get here, like one instructor said, your arm, as soon as you want force, you want to have your arm slightly bent coming through and release the little finger to come up and around. Using your fingertips, your fingers, as a way of get, feeling your swimming stroke is the idea here. People with their hands open, they'll feel the tension in shoulders. And if you press against an object at different parts of your stroke, engage the core. So in other words, if I want to, I get here and I want to uh, have a resistance, so here. I inhale, then I soften my shoulder, tight a little bit, soften my shoulder. So I, then I really engage the core hard, hold it. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale, release, come through. Do a different part. Toning your between toning the muscles physically itself, but sending the signal of this toning to your mind. The mind is composed, I use the word mind in several forms. There's mindfulness, judgment, 
and blah, blah, blah. The mind itself is what's between your ears now. How do you create mindfulness as of feeling the sensation? When you have a high level of sens physical sensations and your mind is focused on that, not on anything else, that is mindfulness. Because you also have a purpose within the mindfulness as well. So you're involved in the whole product and the gliding through the water is the feedback. It is the sensation, it is the fun part. It is a meditative flow for that time period. So you're working your body at a, at a level of an energy point to muscles. You can work your body like in racing from muscles to energy. So it's just a different process. Not one's better, it depends on purpose. What do you want? But for people who want to go speed, there's a whole way of using your fingers fingertips to drive when you're coming up around. So you push here, come up, and you literally drive and then down. And cut in and down. Understanding that little mechanics of flow so to maximize forward motion using your hands with less effort. In other words, you're maximizing that short little effort going forward. You're not losing. You're not wasting effort. That's the goal of meditative. But training the muscles, the sensations, require a certain types of exercises. During the, just practicing, just like I'm doing right now, finding a table, go against a wall, and just pressing the little finger and the, you know, bend your arm, press a little bit against the wall in different stages into the water, and then soften, coming around. Going from hard to soft is, is an element in itself. Being aware creating that long exhale for your swimming, the short inhale process. The short inhale process is just not simple. I got a process of the uh, way most people breathe, through, uh, bringing air through their uh, nose is so narrow. It's unbelievable what you can do. You get uh, instantaneous breath. Uh, certain uh, flute uh, saxophone players or trumpet players can do a really good job. They've learned to open up both nostril chambers. Most people only breathe through one nostril. You never heard that before, I'm sure, for most people. But anyway, learning to breathe through both nostrils is another cluing of how to engage your breath to a higher level for engaging the torso to express itself within the freestyle meditative swimming lapping, doing swimming strokes for laps. But then for speed or fast, that's just changing the angle of the arm and projection for speed and maximizing developing that. So there's, there's a lot of range here for you as an individual swimmer to maximize. But the core breathing is the key, using your fingers, how to shape your hand to maximize uh, what you want to shape your arms. You're going to have more of an arm bit pulling through this way. There's a lot of ways, but using the sensation of this mindfully is an art in itself and coordinate breath with a 20 second breath while you're training and then try to do it in swimming involved over time but softening the upper body softening here is a must releasing all this tension this whole exercise before you should go in you know it doesn't take long to soften your shoulders or get yourself into your body for the swimming that's an attitude development sensation physical development it takes time and focus and practice. But the result is a swimming form that is very, how can I say, healthy in the sense of being made connecting your mind and body, toning your body muscles, and working the breath, working your range, working your torso. Don't let your torso atrophy. And it's the breath. So what's the function of the torso, really, is to, produce, uh, is to create breath for energy and strength. All energy strength comes from the torso. The mind directs it, shapes it, expresses it. That's another way of viewing from an energy point of view. When we get into abstract point of view, that's mental, or you know, physical limitation, that's uh, physical. But in reality, what's the function of the mind? Is to consume energy through thoughts or enjoyment or whatever, or express it through physical movement, directing energy. You direct it. Your mind directs energy and strength here. You can pick selected muscles to engage at different parts of your swing and be aware of it. Train your body and mind to do that. You have an experience of meditative awareness. You can go slow, medium speed, 
whatever, because it has that purpose. But the difference between, if you want to say at the beginning, do a wide, slow, and let just slap in and cut. Let yourself free. But if you want to do competitive, then you got to have a more of a straight line because you cut your time down between point and then how to cut it in. So when you're cutting across, you're cutting your shoulder and then down. So you're creating momentum and whipping down to make that cut for your pull forward. You go, you bring your hand down far out so it goes forward, not pushing your body upwards. That uh, is the approach of this meditative, you know, as a freestyle meditative swimming strokes for laps and even for competition, but first master the laps. Then you can convert it over to competitiveness or faster time for fun, especially for younger people. They like, anyway, this is Scott, the breathing guy. This is the third video and this is dealing more with the breath and the exercises necessary to have imprinting in the brain so you make it a repetitive meditative approach of your mind directing your body for a purpose.